Good evening. Steve here with Mostly Snakes. Um, I put a lot of thought into this, and uh, I've seen this question pop up several times on Positive Pythons and uh, Reticulated Pythons Worldwide, all these other Facebook pages. Everybody wants to know what size enclosure should I put my reticulated python in or any snake for that matter. So for this video I would like to visit a very controversial topic uh, that I like to call what works for me. Simply said. Um, I'm going to just give you a, a few examples here. Don't overthink this uh, this hobby. A lot of people overthink it. Uh, they they just read too far into it, and they, they come up with some really weird conclusions. And, of course, everybody on Facebook, uh, the phrase armchair expert, everybody's going to have their own opinion. But the truth of the matter is, let's go to what works best for you. Um, I've been raising snakes since 94, so I've been through the aquarium setups, I've been through the, the home-built melamines, the, the wood, and now to the PVC enclosures. So all throughout that time, I did what worked best for me. You may have to tweak a few things when it comes to humidity and, and temperature and what you use for heating and all that other stuff, but it all boils down to this. Check your temperatures, if your snake is shedding in pieces and having a hard time shedding, that means your humidity's off. So you have to adjust your humidity. But I'm, I'm going further away from what I actually wanted to talk to you about, and that is what size enclosure is best for my snake. Okay, so as I stated earlier, we're going to visit the topic of what works best for me. Everybody out there is going to have something different to be said. I had one gentleman on my on this YouTube channel comment on one of my videos saying that uh, it was about the recess video. Uh, and forgive me for forgetting the name, but he said if the snakes were in bigger enclosures, they'd be having recess all the time. Not necessarily the fact, because reticulated pythons, as most of you may know, if they're a small snake in a big enclosure, they get a little defensive. They can. You might have a snake that doesn't. So it's based on what the snake is actually showing signs of when it's in an enclosure. If it's a smaller snake in a bigger enclosure, you've got to use a, a hook training method. You know, rub them down with a hook before you get them out and let them know, hey, I'm getting handled. I'm not getting fed. Uh, you got to look at the snake's posturing, different angles of that. So um, we're just going to give you a few examples on this video and show you what I have mine in. You can base your enclosures on the way I do it. You can get others opinion. It doesn't matter. Just keep the heat right, keep the humidity right, and I'll show you little tricks that I've learned over the years that help with that matter. So let's dive right into it. I'm going to go ahead and go behind the scenes. First of all, here we have a six foot uh, titanium super tiger that is in a four foot enclosure. Okay. He's six foot in a four foot. What does he do? He hides. All right. I have a hide for him in here. He chooses paper towels. That snake has no problems. I can slide this glass open. I can reach right in there and take him out. He feels secure because he is able to hide. Right down below him, we have a two and a half foot Phantom Platinum Super Tiger. I'm sorry, Phantom Platinum Tiger. He is in a four foot enclosure. He has a hide. He is a puppy dog. So I could reach right in there, grab him, no problem. Below him, we have about a four, maybe four and a half foot. Uh, I would say he is a white-faced tiger. Uh, again, four foot enclosure. 
he has a hide. Most of the time he is in the hide. So I can pull that hide off of him. I can reach in, grab him, no problem. Now, now you'll have to, he just took a leak in his enclosure. Way to go, Perseus. Perseus is a 13 foot platinum. He is in a six foot by two foot enclosure. Now, he is active right now because apparently he had to take a piss. But most of the time, he is curled up in that corner. He is definitely one that I have to use the hook train method. I have to get a hook. I have to rub him on his head. And then I can reach in and grab him and, and take him out. In here, that is a five foot titanium retic. She is in a small hide, which you can see she's filling it up pretty good. Again, four foot enclosure. She has a hide right there. Okay. She feels secure. She is another one. I could reach right in, grab her, no problem. All right, we've seen enough of that. Here is a nine foot genetic stripe. She is in a six foot enclosure. All right, she does not like this six foot enclosure. This girl right here does really well in this. This is a FB90 uh, um, tub. She does really well by getting right in this corner, coiling up on the heat source, and that's where she normally stayed. When I opened the drawer, she would have a great feeding response, and that's all it was. She'd come out thinking she was getting food. By the way, is that not a great looking poster? Oh. Anyway, I digress. All right, so she does really good in the tub, right? I put her in there because I had an issue with the tubs. I needed to get them cleaned out. I had a few mites getting, uh, getting caught up in them. So I took that outside and totally hosed it down. But I've kept her in there. Now, right above her is about a nine foot platinum female in a four foot enclosure. You can see that Giselle's, the genetic stripe, is two foot longer than the Platinums, all right? But that works for her, because all she does is stay around her water bowl all the time. She wants to say hi. Hello, Phoebe. All right, but there again, that works for her. Four foot enclosure. You have a five foot normal reticulated python that lives in her water bowl. She has a hide. That's where she stays. Doesn't matter. All right? You can't really count this guy because he's just an asshole. That's a cotton mouth. All right? This girl right here, that is a 10-foot orange glow tiger, stays in her hide all the time. That's where she feels secure. She is in a four-foot enclosure. And it works great for her. All right, so this is a five foot enclosure that's dirty. Thank you, Garris. He is a, about a 10 foot uh, golden child tiger male. Okay, but he does not like that one. The only reason I had him in that is for breeding reasons for her. And she peed. Thank you, Lucina. We'll be cleaning you in a little bit. She is actually due in about three weeks with some eggs. I digress. All right, what I'm getting at is your size of your enclosure. Ah, guys, you hear people all the time, oh, if it's over nine feet, it should be in a six foot enclosure. And I could have this one right here who is 10 feet in a six foot enclosure and waste five feet of that enclosure. That's all she does. The only time she comes out of there is when she eats. Now, granted, a lot of you say they're active at night. You don't get to see them that much. Guys, I come down here all the time, two to three times a night to check on her. 
every one of these snakes are very content. They feel secure. You got your motley golden child. She stays right there in that corner. I have a hide for her. She doesn't like the hide. She feels secure enough in that corner. So, all of these enclosures, mainly four foot long enclosures, the biggest thing you really have to worry about is the actual uh, behavior of your snake, okay? If your snake is very small, it's in a large enclosure, it's striking at you, it's, uh, it's being defensive, it's not feeling secure, put him a hide in there, or her, put her a hide, a tight-fitting hide to see if that changes her behavior. If it does, doesn't matter what size enclosure you have, right? I've got, uh, let's see, I showed you the one that loves to be in a tub. I, she hasn't personally told me that, but her behavior is much better when she's in the tub. Again, she didn't tell me. Um, my Sunfire Motley, she's about six foot. She was raised in a tub. Most of you have to realize that a lot of these big breeders keep a lot of their snakes in small tubs. The uh, five foot titanium from Prehistoric Pets lived in a FB40, I believe, tub, which is a hell of a lot smaller than the 70s, okay, or the 90s. Much smaller than a four foot enclosure. So you ask what's best you could have a snake in a whole room that's fully loaded with with uh, leaves and branches for it to climb and ponds for it to swim and everything it might be a little defensive for you when you come in to take it out so it's all on the behavior of your snake if it's defensive offer it a hide uh, there again you have them in a small tub a big snake in a small tub it's just going to have a feeding response. It's going to come shooting out of there every time you slide it open. So you got to be careful with that. One of the reasons why I put her in the six foot enclosure. So even though she don't like it, she may have told me, I'm not sure. I'll get back with you on that. But anyway, when you're, when you're asking the question on Facebook, what size enclosure should I have my snake in? Use a little bit of common sense. Um, you can buy enclosures that fit that snake all throughout its life cycle. You bought it at two, uh, two foot, so you're gonna have, you're gonna run out and buy a, a tub, a tub system to keep your two foot or your hatchlings or up to your six month old. Well, then you're gonna turn around and buy a, a three foot enclosure, three foot by one foot by uh, two foot until it gets up to say six or seven feet. And then you're gonna put it in a four foot. That's a lot of money, guys. Put it in a four foot enclosure. Like I said, I've got a 10 footer in a four foot enclosure. She has plenty of space. All she does is sit in the hide unless she feeds or she drinks, she comes out. Right now she's peeking out, but I pull my snakes out a lot through the week. Uh, you guys might've seen my video from yesterday, the recess. My snakes get out a lot to go ahead and stretch out and, and in, get some enrichment so really is not a factor you don't have to overthink this hobby it's very simple check your temps check your humidity temps between what 84 to 87 not really 87 maybe 86 and then on the cool side you're going to want about 75 76 77 somewhere around there all right humidity big factor if you're using glass aquariums it's, you'll find that it's super hard to maintain the humidity. All right, they're going to be shedding in pieces. They're going to be uh, having stuck shed, stuck eye caps, stuff like that. Uh, one of the ways to combat that is to, when you see them going into blue, as soon as they go into blue, one spritz in the morning. When they go back to clear, give them a spritz in the morning and a spritz at night. You put a towel over a screen top all the way up to the light. Don't put it right up against a, a heat source or, you know, you have a fire, stuff like that. Again, common sense. Uh, in PVC enclosures, real simple. If you see that they're shedding in pieces, 
and uh, or having stuck shed, you know, you got to increase your humidity level. One way to do that is to move the water dish closer to your radiant heat panel or uh, a belly heat, like a heat tape or something like that, and that will increase your humidity. Or when you see them going blue, start spritzing them once a day. When they go back to clear, twice a day. Give them a good spritz. You'll get a one-piece shed just about every time. It might be broken a little bit, but they won't have much stuck shed. All of this is common sense. You'll see that most of mine like, well, you know, to be honest, tonight, a lot of them are not in the water. A lot of them like to be in the water. That's how they regulate their humidity at times. That's how they regulate their temperature. So a snake, give them a little bit of credit. They're gonna do what they need to do as well. Make sure you clean their water out uh, on a regular basis. I do mine about every two to three days. There again, another controversial subject we can talk about. Hmm, can you guess what it is? Tap water or bottled water or distilled water. Which do you give your snakes? Is it safe to give them distilled water? Should you buy uh, bottled water for your snakes? Can I use the water straight out of the tap? 24 years, guys, I've been using water out of the tap. I haven't lost but one snake due to impaction. Had nothing to do with the water. So tap water is probably okay. Uh, I've had snakes for a long period of time that showed no signs of any kind of harm due to uh, tap water. If I can drink it, I have a feeling they'll survive. Um, there again, controversial topic. What works for me? I don't know. If you guys live in Detroit, if you're drinking bottled water, yeah, give your, give your snakes bottled water too. Uh, and I don't mean to single you guys out. I just know Detroit has a really bad problem with water. Uh, that's pretty much known everywhere. So not being a jerk. Um, anyway, getting back to uh, temperatures and heat and stuff like that, humidity. If your snake's shedding in pieces, spritz them when they go into blue. Spritz them twice when they go clear. You'll have much better sheds. Enclosures. If the snake can get around, keep in mind, again, these breeders will keep these snakes in tiny tubs, most of them throughout their entire lives. A full-grown reticulated python, you're talking anywhere from 13 to, tw uh, 13 to 18 feet, will do perfectly fine in an eight-foot enclosure. All right, these snakes are not as difficult as what a lot of people uh, portray. Now, this female I have over here, when she gets done laying, uh, I did pick up uh, a bunch of PVC. I'm building her an eight foot enclosure. That will be the last size that I build for her. She has been in five foot, six foot, all the way up to this point. Now she's gonna get an eight foot enclosure and that is just to make her just that much more comfortable. More than likely, she's going to pick a corner, and she's going to stay right there. So, take it for what it's worth. But the key is to not overthink this hobby, guys. You can ask any question you want on Facebook, and I guarantee you'll get 17 to 20 different answers for it. And everybody thinks that their method is correct, just like me. My method is correct for what I have. It is what works for me. Find out what works for you. Uh, humidity and temperature, of course, has got to be a guideline for that. And I think we all know those guidelines. If not, feel free to ask me. I'll, I'll get you to it uh, the best I can. But keep their water clean. Keep their enclosures heated and a cool side. And keep the moisture in there. That's all you need to worry about. The size of the enclosure, don't overthink it. These retakes stay in their hides most of the time. I feel like I'm wasting half of my basement because the little bastards aren't using all of their enclosure. And the majority of mine are four feet. I may get some hate mail on this. And I'm guessing one person in particular is going to go ahead and hound me on it. And that's fine. Hound away. I don't care. I'm doing what's good for me. What's, my snakes are all healthy. Uh, anybody that knows me, that knows my snakes, they know that I have very healthy snakes. So take that for what it's worth. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you got something out of it. I hope that you saw 
my really cool banners. Can you see that? Oh, man. Love it. Coming to an expo to you soon. We're going to have some uh, hatchlings, hopefully, uh, coming up this spring. And um, looking forward to everything coming up in the next year or two. I do have several projects in store for next season, so it's only going to get better. And you know why it's only going to get better? Because I'm doing what works best for me. And that's exactly what you guys should be doing. So if you have any questions, any comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all the stuff you guys done for my channel and supporting, whether hitting the like button or hitting subscribe. If you have any uh, suggestions that what you want to see next, give me a shout. Peace out. Wow, such a nice banner. Look at Perseus. He's the boss. Have a good weekend, guys.